But today, uh, this session, the emphasis is not just China, but really China in the context of globalization. As we all know, globalization is nothing new in the world. Historically, it, go up and, it goes up and down. Sometimes it is stronger, other times weaker. I'm reminded that 2,000 years ago at the Silk Road, which is today, if you want, the Chinese call them Belt and Road Initiative. I don't know what's the difference, about the same. The Silk Road 2,000 years ago was when there's a lot of trade in, uh, interactions between China and the, other, and the other East Asian countries, as well as a lot of Middle East and even all the way to Europe. So historically, 2,000 years ago, globalization was with us. Over time, it ebbs and flow. The next event I will mention is perhaps 1401. What happened in 1401? A Chinese admiral, who, by the way, is of Islam background, he went all the way to East Africa and to the Gulf states. That was 1400 something. So that was another sign of the globalization of this world. 1453, when the Ottoman Empire took over Istanbul or Constantinople, the land link was somewhat cut, and hence the sea route began to flow again. And in 1492, when Columbus went to the New World, that was another step in the globalization, except that the ship that Columbus has was only about 20% that of Admiral Zheng He's from China 90 years before that. While the rest of the world was globalizing, China decided to go the opposite direction. <clears throat> and that was perhaps the beginning of the waning of the Chinese empire. It caused me to think, I cannot help but think, today who is the most anti-globalized world, country in the world? It is no longer China. China, after being part of globalization, closed up itself and now finally globalized again. China is today very much for globalization. It was only 2001 when they joined WTO the rest of the world welcomed China to the globalized world. So this less than 20 years ago, little did we expect at that time that today, the West, in particular, the United States, which was for sure the leader of the globalized world, at least starting with World War II, end of World War II, should be today perhaps the one that is the least open to globalization. So these are all factors that are affecting us today, and I find it very, very amusing. Here, let me just say one other point, one, two other points. The first one is, a lot of people assume that America is for multilateralism, America is for globalization, America is a country that is for internationalization. Not so. Read American history. America, for the first 100-some years, if not 200 years, was close to 200 years, was very much an isolationist. It was really World War II that brought the United States to become the leader of the so-called globalization world. And so today, what we are seeing America, America first, as somebody mentioned earlier in the last session, what they are doing with the trade war, is America in some way going back to its old habit of isolationism rather than open to the rest of the world. So these are all issues that are confronting us today. And what will the world be like if America indeed moves more and more toward isolationism? What will happen to Europe? What role will China play? And that is the topic of our discussion here today. Will China, together with EU, perhaps also India, maybe Japan, become leaders in the globalization process. These are very interesting issues for us to address. So with that, I will first, uh, I have two very distinguished guests here. Uh, you all know Mr. Si Wai Leung. Uh, he is a professional uh, in his earlier life, and then he was very much involved in the drafting of the basic law that governed the return of Hong Kong to her motherland, China. 
and she, eventually she became, he became the ch chief executive of Hong Kong for five years, ending about two and a half years ago. And uh, to my far, far left is Eric. Some of you may know Eric, but I doubt. If you watch TED Talks, you will see Eric, because Eric is a pretty hot TED Talk guy. Uh, educated in UC Berkeley and an MBA from uh, Stanford and finally uh, his doctorate from Fudan University in Shanghai. He is a venture capitalist. He also is a founder and chairman of the biggest internet platform, uh, media platform in China called Guancha Syndicate. So we have some very uh, interesting uh, persons here. So with that, can I first invite Eric? Eric, you have a ba background in the West, you have a background in China. Tell us, what, is, what does that mean in today's day and age for China to be part of the globalized world? 